Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we created our DevOps repos where we added our source control to this application and we were using DevOps repos as our version control option. Now, in this video tutorial, we will go ahead and start working on our home component view and we will fix this missing images and then we will start coding this application further so the first thing that you want to do is go back to your visual studio ide and then inside your www root folder we will create a new folder and we will call this folder as images and all the images that we are going to use in our application that we think that we're going to make accessible to public we can add them here so images like these images for our home view like a slider image or any welcome image that you're going to use you can add them here so let's go ahead and add all the images that we need for our application over here so i've copied these three images that i want to add to this images folder I'm going to right click this folder images, reveal it in finder, and then I'm going to paste my three images inside this folder. The next thing I want to do is go to my client app, go to my source, go to my app folder, and open my home component. And inside my home component, I'm going to open my home.component.html file. And here inside my HTML file, I'm going to add the source for those images. So if you scroll down where it says column medium four, that's the bootstrap class. Here you will find the option to add your images. You can add the source for your images, the three images that you want to display. And once you have added these sources, you can go ahead and save the file make sure you add the sources as it is as you see in this video tutorial so all you have to do is a forward slash the folder name which is images and then forward slash the image name itself inside the folder now please note that you don't have to specify the entire path as www root forward slash images because uh, angular 7 will automatically have access to this root folder so all you have to do is just add the path starting from this slash then the folder name where you have stored the images and the image name itself once saved let's go ahead and open our application and just refresh the browser once you refresh the browser you will be able to see the images being loaded into this bootstrap element here now let's go ahead and fix this text on uh, top of our bootstrap element which is this card that we have created and inside this card we have some text here on the top let's add some CSS code to fix this as well all the code that I have used will be available in our source control repository, which is added to DevOps repos, Microsoft Azure DevOps repos that we created in the last video tutorial. The link will be provided in the video description. So just before we fix the CSS code, if you are not familiar with Bootstrap 4 or with Bootstrap, how you create elements, UI elements in Bootstrap, you can refer to Bootstrap's official website, which is getsbootstrap.com. And here you can just change the version to your latest version of Bootstrap. And then you can access the all the UI elements here. So let's say you want to search for cards. So you can just type cards here and then hit enter. And you will be taken to this page where you will have access to different types of cards that you can create using Bootstrap code. So I have accessed the code from here and created simple cards for our application just to display the technology that we are using to create this project. And you can use your favorite version of the card that's available here and you can show it in your home view and make it more presentable as per your need. 
so now let's go ahead and fix our CSS code also if you have any questions related to this home page view you can always use the comment section to clear your doubts so now to fix the CSS code let's go back to our application and now let's go ahead and open the CSS file for our home component so let's open our home component dot CSS and there we will paste this code that I created for styling our home page I will provide once again this code in the video description it will be accessible in the dev op repos and you can download the source code from there so now all you have to do is after you have pasted this CSS you can save this file and then go ahead back to your browser and then it's automatically refresh you don't have to do anything here since it's angular is running on live server and as you see the CSS has now been fixed and we have a presentable home page now we will also fix this fonts since I don't like the standard font here so we will add some Google fonts to our application so let's go ahead and do that as well so open a new tab or open a browser window and search on for Google fonts on Google search and then you will see this link just click on Google fonts and the font that I have used in this project I have used it from Google fonts so you can choose any font that you like and once you find the font font that you like all you have to do is click on this plus symbol that you see here so let's add the font that I want to add to my project so the font that I like is Montserrat so I'm going to search it Montserrat and it's the first option available in my search and now I'm just going to click on this plus symbol here and here you will see an option it says family selected just open this click on this it will open a window here all you have to do is you need this font family over here but since we are not going to add it in our CSS file that we have for our home component and we want to use it in our entire project like for our entire application we want to use this font so I'm just going to import it instead of adding this font family because I don't have this font downloaded in my project and I don't want to download it I'll just refer reference this font to Google and using Google's CDN we can have access to this font so we don't have to download it and add it but if you wish to you can download it and add it as well or you can embed this font but here what we want to do is import it so all you want to do is copy this line which says add import and the URL to access this font go back to our project and now we will add it for the entire project so we don't want to add it into this CSS component file we want to add it in our app CSS file so we'll go to the style.css for our entire application and here we will paste this fonts also in case if these font let's say this link is not accessible the server is down you can always add some backup fonts over here so I'm just going to add one more font here and that should be it I'm going to save this file and now if I go back to my browser and go back to my client app I should see some changes hmm, I don't see changes oh yes I didn't see these changes because this is the body of my application and I need to go back and in CSS we need to use the we need to tell CSS that we want to use this font for our entire body of the application so let's do that body so let's open close our body tag and here what we want to do is go back to our Google font and all you want to do is add this font family attribute to our CSS so let's go and add it to our body now let's save this and now let's go back to our client app and now as you see that the font has been applied so we had not added that 
property to our body that's why it was not added to the body of our application although the font was imported so even if we have to now go and inspect our application go to network just refresh this I should be able to see here the font that is being imported from my Google API link that I used to import it so that should be it guys for this video tutorial so we have we have finally fixed the home component and yeah one thing before we leave we will also try to push these new changes to our source control so let's go to this option version control click on review solution and commit and here you will see the files and folders that the files that you have made any changes to since I, I am seeing only three files because I already committed my previous changes and I have edited these files in order to show you how you can commit your changes to your dev op repo so now here what we want to do is just click on any one of the files when it's highlighted you will have the option to add your commit message just go ahead and add your commit message I can just add something like modified HT home component Uh, you can add any message here and then once you have committed the message here you can just go ahead and click on this option which says commit so click commit it will ask you do you want to proceed just say click proceed and here you will see the options where it says the files that are going to be pushed and here we will check off this option which says push changes to the remote repository after commit and then we will click commit and now it's going to ask you for your username and email now in order for us to provide a username we need to create an alternate username in DevOps repos previously in the video tutorial we pushed the changes but now when we want to push it again we need to provide our username so in order to provide your username this in this section here you would want to go back to your DevOps repo and here what you want to do is where you see your profile picture here just click on that and click on the security option next thing that you want to do is click on alternate credentials and here you will create a secondary username you will also create a password for your secondary username and I confirm the password and then click save once these changes have been saved you can then go back to your visual studio ide and then all you want to do is copy or just type in that username that you just created the secondary username so i'm just going to open visual studio secondary username and then the email that email that you used for your azure devops so that's the email that you're going to use so just copy it so you will use your email address and your username use that just click OK and now all you want to do is on this window just click push changes and you see that the changes have been pushed now all you want to do is go back to dev op repos click on your project go to your repo go to history and there you will see the changes that you just pushed it will say just now if you click on that you can see the changes that you just pushed into your repository since I just edited just modified the code added some comments just to show you how it works so I will just see this minimum changes but in your case since we you are going to modify your home component images you will see bunch of files over here in the changes so that should be it for this video tutorial and if you have any questions you can always use the comment section and i'll try my best to respond to you to your questions as soon as possible so thank you once again for watching my video tutorial please like and subscribe